Starting, we're back on the air. Hopefully this was going to work, everybody. What about now, guys? <laughs> <laughs> the switching. It's, it's so weird because you're switching fine on my end. Yeah, I think at a certain point, we just got to get moving. Yep. Yes, you're switching on live on YouTube. Excellent. All right. Wonderful. So, I'm, I'm, I apologize. I'm apologizing for Google, for yeah. YouTube. I don't know that you designed the interface. I, we don't blame you, Richard. It's uh, but... Anyway, let's rock and roll. Yeah, this is this is much better. We're back on now. Um, as we're talking, I am going to uh, put the link out in a couple of our groups, let people know of the new link rather than the old one. Sure. Which, but it, the thing is that what I've I have a setting on my YouTube site that if they just go to the main, you know, my main site on YouTube, at the top of the page it says live now. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah, so they can just go there as well so now we're switching finally that's fantastic fantastic you guys are um so yeah you're switching because I, I see i monitor the youtube page separate from the google hangout page but i have the volume turned down so i can keep track of the comments tony says it works yeah tony. <laughs> tony, tony thanks for finding us back again yeah thanks so we, we'll, we'll, let's wait for a few more people to log on we had a, a bunch before so the you made an announcement that LumaForge is doing something different at NAB this year. So the first year you did Faster Together across the street from the convention center. That's right. We did. That yeah. It was, was at the hotel, the Marriott, wasn't it? Yeah, it was at the Marriott. And actually uh, what's happening this year happened in, it's very similar, strangely enough. Uh, two years ago, <laughs> or I guess three, is three or two years ago. Uh, it three, was two. Yeah. Two, 2017. 2017, uh, 2017, 2018. Yeah. So 2017, we realized that uh, there was going to be no FCP work suite where a lot of these presentations were happening, um, you know, and basically we were like, people have gotten really used to having that thing. And there had to be something that people could sort of come and see and uh, where the community could sort of get together. And so we decided to launch Faster Together pretty much at a moment's notice. It sort of happened and we were like, you know what? All right, we're just gonna figure this out. And then uh, 30 presentations later and a near aneurysm from Patrick. Um, <laughs> and like we had the thing like out there and it was kind of amazing and it sort of took off. And then we did it on the show floor uh, last year, kind of. It was right off the show floor, but it was at the convention center. And we were like trying to figure out, okay, what's the thing we're going to do this year? And then we got an email, uh, you know, because we've been a sponsor of the Super Meet uh, in past years saying that they were not going to do one this year. And like, we were like, well, somebody has to do something. This is yeah. like an institution. And so basically we decided to pick up the mantle and we're going to have something for the community on Tuesday night that is going to be, I think really get back to the basics of why we all go to NAB and have a good time. And it's the presentations that we're going to try and put on are really designed from the ground up to sort of be something that people want to see and remind people why they come and why this business matters and why what we do matters. Absolutely. Oh, no, absolutely. I remember the first year you guys had the Faster Together stage across the street. I really, really liked that. I really enjoyed it. And then last year, you stepped it up and you got on oh, the yeah. convention floor and you had this much more elaborate setup with more people and stage lighting and cameras and a nice room. And the, pre the presenters were still there, the same kind of quality of presenters that were that you had the year before that you stepped up to the convention center. And now this year, that wasn't good enough. This no. year, you've got exponentially bigger exponentially bigger i mean that's very true but uh we're also partnering with people who have done exponentially bigger right so that's where we're really excited to be working with michael horton to to create a new version of faster together that instead of being over three days it's going to be one evening much larger room um and we're going to have you know uh instead of 30 presentations it'll be less yeah. uh but they're going to be amazing presentations um you know, all of them, all of them. And what we really want to do is kind of um, look, the guys at the Super Me built this amazing community, you know, quite honestly, like 
I was crushed that this like this has been an institution, right? So at a core level, right. um, I think it's a reason the community that they built is something that's like needed at NAB. And there has to be a place for the community to come, get together, have a great night out together. Everybody sees each other. Because I think the, the problem with uh, NAB and the show floor a little bit can be that it's very, very congested. It's very, very tech and business oriented. It's not very people friendly. And there's not a great place for everybody, no matter who you are, to sort of get together and like hang out. And that right. is, and when we found out that that was going to be going away, we we're like, well, then why are people like, if, if there aren't events like that, then why would people be coming to NAB? And that was really the reason we decided to step in and sort of do this is to make sure that there was a community centric event happening in NAB on Tuesday nights, because we know people set their calendars to it. So that's that. Yeah. Typically you're absolutely correct. Last year, you guys had, you did three days of yeah. you know, eight hour days of events. So is this going to be less work for you or more work? Yeah. <laughs> what, to be honest, you know, we don't know. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we don't know. I'm not, I, I would guess, based on having uh, you know produced the last two years, my guess would be that there are going to be some issues that are bigger, some issues that are the same, and uh, some issues that'll be smaller because we're dealing with less variables, right? But um, I think the best way to describe it might be that uh, anything we do wrong will be magnified more. <laughs> Yes. There you go. Yeah. If if the projector doesn't work, it's a much larger projector that won't be working. You know. Right. If, no, that's true. If the sound cuts out, and there will be more people looking at not working projector. Um, uh, and that's and that's why we also have a very specific team of people that we brought in who um, who are well, better at at that portion than we are uh, to run the AV. We actually just had that team run uh, help run Lossy Pug last week. Um, and it went, you know, that <laughs> knock on wood, oh, yeah. that one went flawlessly. So no, it's already happened. It went, it went very, very well. We've got it the did. footage back. Well, it's I'm saying knock on wood because we we're, we're hoping that that previous success, uh, turns into yeah. <laughs> similar success. No, we're bringing in the same team. Look, we have some really, really, um, amazing people. Jeff Orthwine's coming back who ran faster together last, last year, year and like really made sure that turned into a well-oiled machine. Yeah, he's going to come back for this this year. And the nice thing, too, is we've got the community of people, Michael Horton, Bill Davis, a lot of the super me people are already uh, coming back to make sure that this thing still keeps its sort of spirit in in tune with like what has happened on the community side. And really, our only goal is to now line up the absolute best presentations possible so that like we just kind of knock some things out of the park from that from that side we're gonna be very user focused uh yeah less dog and pony there's gonna be a lot less dog and pony and the bottom line is like we're look my goal i'm just gonna put it out there is like i want this to become the super bowl for you know nab like that's really my goal we may not get there but that's the thing i want to throw out is like these are the best of the best people getting up and putting up essentially ted talks you know for the people who come to nab Right. So Anders Utterstrom, you guys oh, know him. Oh, hey, Anders. How's it going, man? He, he says, hello, I missed what you are doing. Bigger? It was really good last year. What a job you guys did. Oh, yeah. Anders, big news for you, friend. We're taking over the Rio. Uh, we're going to be at the Rio Hotel on Tuesday, April 9th. And uh, essentially, the Super Meet is not happening this year. So there has to be something happening Tuesday night at the Rio, and it's going to be the Faster Together stage. Yes. And so this is Faster Together 3.0. <laughs> that so sounds 3 .0. about right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because you've had, you know, the first one was one way, the one across the street. And then last year was 2.0, which was a, a giant step up. And this one is even, you know, is, is completely much bigger than the last two, but it's yeah. also different. It's also different. Yeah. You know, I think at this rate, next year is going to be Madison Square Garden, and the well, year after that, the Hall of DM, yeah, we just, I think. We're going to have an AB somewhere else. And then and then uh, eventually we'll be on the moon. So I'd actually like to do NAB at Lake Tahoe, get some nature in, some trees. <laughs> you know, trees do, do it in like an outdoor amphitheater. Yeah. Yeah. Or, you know, there's that place in Colorado. The the, like the, Red, there's Red Rock Canyon. They've got that big amphitheater out in the middle of the monuments. Now you're talking. You know, the I was just in Sedona monuments. last week. It was beautiful. So, like, that was... Uh, Anyway, we got off topic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Master together, Red Rock. So besides the amount of work, since you guys really don't know, I mean, obviously this is a new situation. Is this the biggest event that Luma Forge themselves have put on of this this type? Totally. Yeah. And I think I think it holds a thousand people, right? That's what I th I think. Uh, it's it's we're not, uh, to be honest, we haven't figured out exactly what the room layout's going to be at this point. That is okay. still happening. We've got the we've got the room booked, um, but. I'm not completely certain. It's going to be somewhere yeah. between 500 and 1,000. Okay. The, theoretically, the fire marshal won't kick people out if they're under 1,000, but we don't know if we'll have chairs for 1,000 people or 500 people or, you know, if we're going to have a giant bouncy house, uh, you know, obstacle course now, in uh, the back of the room. What we can say is we're being very sparse on details at the moment. We do have some presentations already lining up. We just are not ready to formally announce those. Those are going to be coming uh, probably about two weeks from now, yeah, week of February. February 12th. Yep. And are they going to be different than they have in the past? I mean, a different style of presentation because the stage yes. is so much bigger. Oh, as different than Faster Together? I would say you can expect it to be uh, a little bit like Faster Together presentations, and then there will be some that will be completely different. Right. So Anders uh, says, congratulations, i got to get people together from Chicago to go and go there. So Anders, are you part of Chicago CPUG? Is that where he's from? I think he's involved there. He and Dan. I, I met him and last and year. Yeah. I met yeah. him. I was having an early dinner at the Super Meet, and I met him and his friends, and they were from, I think, think they were from Chicago CPUG. So that would be great, yeah. That'd be fantastic. So the room itself is really nice. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. And our goal, yeah. honestly, is um, you know I think there used to be more community and less commercialism around some of this stuff. And at a core level, I really want to see some of that start to come back to see a little bit of like the fun and the joy in some of the things around what we do. Um, really start to perk back up. I think our industry as a whole has become very focused more on buttons than on story. And like, I think a big initiative that we're going to have here is, is to get people talking again and to get a sense of enthusiasm that's, I think, been missing for a long time back into events like these. So that would be fantastic, Sam. I know exactly what you mean about button pushers or pushing, I should say. Yeah, it seems like people are, you know, overly concerned about, you know, buttons and not the content and not, you know, story writing, not the basics of lighting and, and audio sometimes. Like, why yeah. are you even making the content that you're making? And right. is that the best version of the content story wise that you could be making? Is there a purpose to what you're doing? And if there's not, let's look at that. Yeah, instead exactly. Of, instead of how do you press the button? It's why do you press the button? Yeah. You know, I think that's kind of like the, the big key difference that that we feel is something that's been underserved um you know so yeah i mean of course there will be talk from time to time in in relationship to the context of why but the the hope is to be more uh centered around filmmaking and why we're passionate about it and why we as a community care and i think even you know deeper than that to even try and find ways to maybe empower people to do more of the thing they want to do and reconnect back to the why they got into this industry. It doesn't matter why I got into it. It matters why the people in attendance watch. And, and our real hope would be to inspire. Um, wow, what is that? That's my <laughs> stupid phone. <laughs> Tornado warning. <laughs> hey, yeah, I get, I get these calls from you know, telemarketers. That sometimes it just says the United States. So that, yeah, I sure want to answer that likely? one. That's I get a lot of those. Scam like, yeah, yeah, I get a lot of scam like. It's a, they call me all the time. Are you on so, t -Mall? <laughs> so I'm sorry, Sam. Continue. I got a couple. We're going to talk to the no, chat. I mean, the bottom line is like, I, it, it would be truly gratifying to me if people showed up to this event and they left feeling inspired to go make something they care about, you know, and go make, make a difference with something that they're doing. Even if it's just figuring out how to make the company they work at stuff more interesting. You know, I think that's, that's the, the net effect that I'm hoping that this type of thing will start, which is like people really looking at the work that they do and saying, look, I'm here at whatever job that I'm here at, 
how am I going to make wherever I am the absolute best possible environment that it can be? And how do we tell the best possible story that we can for wherever I am? Absolutely. Absolutely. So Tony says, well, Tony, was it says? Tony says, uh, Gallardo says, well said, Sam. Jasper hmm. Seeger says, hi, everyone. You guys know Jasper? Don't know him personally, but I've heard the name. He uh, does Post Lab, right? Yes, yes. I had him on Final Cut Pro Radio a few episodes back about talking about Post Lab. It's, it's uh, has to do with the server and a GitHub something or other. I don't, I'm not that familiar with it. And of course, Bill Davis, who says the big question: Will there be a raffle? There will absolutely well, be a raffle, led by Michael Horton. <laughs> We're yes, we're raffling off. Uh, Sam's got a great collection of uh, mugs. Yeah, uh, collect collectible mugs. Those will be raffled off. Um, we don't know what will be raffled. I feel like raffled those off, might right? be as popular as some of the plugin packages that get given out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can, Sam, I I know we haven't discussed this internally, but can we promise not to give away anything that's going to slow someone's computer to a crawl? No, we can't actually promise that. We cannot promise that we won't give away things that will slow your computer to a crawl. Are you saying that sometimes plugins do that? No, never. No, mm -mm. no plugins never slow down your computer. Oh, they absolutely do. <laughs> but we will definitely be giving away some things that don't slow down your computer and that make things easier and faster as well. But it's going to be a mixed bag, as all raffles are. Absolutely. So um, let me see. There's a question here. Is LumaForge going to be present on the NAB show floor anywhere? I, I had a similar question. So in the past, you've had two separate rooms. You've had the Faster Together stage, and then you had the workflow suite. So, so we're still working some of that stuff out, to be quite okay. honest. Uh, we're not going to have a booth that is distinctly ours. But we were probably going to be making appearance in a couple of different places on the show floor. We're still narrow, ironing out some of those details. That'll come out with a press release. But I think we decided um, we do things a little bit differently here. And we generally made the decision that the smartest way for us to do the coolest thing possible uh, would be to do faster together in a big way, in a big night, and get as many people as possible in the door. and then let our guys go and, and have the customer meetings and have the conversations that are important, you know, cause that's really the way after doing NAB for, for years, the way that I sort of view this is that it's all about the conversations significantly more than it is about what necessarily happens on the show floor. Because I think the way that the show has evolved in a lot of ways is you can pretty much find out anything that happened the sh on the show the next day on the internet, but what you can't duplicate is actually meeting all of the different people. So we're gonna have uh, a briefing room and briefing area at somewhere. We're still working some of that out. There'll be meetings and then there's probably gonna be a place where you can see a jellyfish uh, on the show floor, but we're putting the primary amount of our resources into the Tuesday night event. That's where our focus, we think that's the coolest thing we can do. And that's pretty much how we approach everything. Oh, absolutely. I, I agree. You, not only the next day, Sam, you could see at the same time, <laughs> a lot of the stuff that they, you know, on the show floor, people are broadcasting live so much yeah. that you can actually watch it live. But being there, you know, I can talk about it myself because I've been there for the last two years, is completely different than watching it on live. I mean, watching it live is a second choice. Being there specifically, experiencing it, meeting people in person, that's much, much better than, of course, watching it live. So, And for people who haven't been before, the thing that I will say, too, is the best things happen at community meetups, conversations that you have, places yes. that you go. So if you're going to go, uh, and I still actually have to talk to the guys about the, the Guru Gathering. We haven't even focused on that. But there's events like... Um, the Colorist Mixer, the Guru Gathering, Faster Together Stage on Tuesday night. There's always a thing on Wednesday night, Media Motion Ball. Those are the places. Figure out where your friends are going to go. Figure out where your community is going to go. And then start putting yourself in those places, and you're guaranteed to have a good time. If you just show up excited to see the this, this show floor and some of the tech, you'll have a fun two hours, and then you're pretty much done. Yeah. But if you go to the Pepper Mill, yeah. then you're going to be extremely full. 
and probably meet some cool people. That's well, that's yeah, right. Yeah, I, I the first year I was there two years ago, uh, Brad Olson and I were traveling around. I said, I'll buy you breakfast if you come pick me up and take me to the uh, e, to the convention center. So we did that. And I made a big mistake. I got a full mm -hmm. breakfast. It was way, way too much. I said, we're not doing that again. I'm getting the bagel and cream cheese in the morning because that's, you know, I don't need that kind of weight when I'm walking around. But the one thing about Vegas that I've noticed, and Bill Davis told me this before I ever got there before, no matter, it looks different than a normal map. When you look at a map of Las Vegas, it looks like a normal city map, Washington, DC, New York, LA, whatever. It's much, much more expansive. Everything is so much more further apart mm -hmm. than what you're used to. Yeah, it's kind of like people look at the city of Los Angeles on a map and they're like, oh, we're going to go here and we're going to go here. And you're like, no, that's like uh, the distance from one side of Boston to, you know, the other side of Massachusetts. You know, yeah, it's only six hotels away, but that could be five miles. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's about right. I mean, the Bellagio fountain itself, I think, is like a good half mile. Yeah, they put a lot of money and effort into making those things uh, absurdly enormous and possibly affronts to humanity. But well, that's a, another, <laughs> exactly. another time. Um, <laughs> Where do they get all of that water in the middle of the desert? Yeah, that's it's, uh, no it's, idea. But we got not get too deep and... on this, though, at the moment. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so when I, I came to see Brad Olson's premiere at LACPUG last June, and I stayed right on Hollywood, Hollywood Boulevard, right? And it was yeah. only about two miles from downtown to the Walk of Fame. And I said, okay, I could probably walk that, but let me get an Uber, okay? I got an Uber. It's two miles, 25-minute trip Sounds through right. traffic. Sounds through right. Through traffic yep. to get down there. There I'm glad I wasn't paid by the minute. minute. Walk, probably with, with all the stoplights and everything. Yeah, but I was surprised how long it took. That's one thing good about Uber. They give you the price in advance. If it gets stuck in traffic, it's on them. Yeah. Um, you know, I think, like, NAB is an art. There's an art to this. And uh, I think our our goal as a company is to help make that art a little bit easier and facilitate. I think the other question we have is, um, you know, on a, on a general rule, we're sort of curious what you guys are interested in, what you guys would like to see happen and where you guys are going to be and how do we get like a healthy social media sort of togetherness push at NAB. We're open to ideas. I think our, our goal here is to figure out how we connect people in the community a little bit more. If there's something cool going on. How do we redirect and how do we sort of help people find each other? Absolutely. Absolutely. So this is a, this is a giant, it's going to be like a big Luma Forge party there. So it's not going to be Final Cut Pro centric. It's just going to be more post-production, but of course, Final Cut will be included, but. Our lineup is coming out February 12th. <laughs> <laughs> February 12th at fasterdogether.com for sure. That's right. That's where the initial line lineup will come. I'm sure that there'll be changes made to it between when we put out that initial lineup and when things actually happen on the day. That's happened every year. I haven't seen that not happen. And we'll be po posting and connecting through other sources. Yep. No, absolutely. So are you guys more stressed out about this event because it's so much bigger than the three days you had to put on before? Uh, I'm not. Are you? No, we maintain a low level stress at all times. <laughs> <laughs> so this is not really any different than any other day. This is just a like, okay, there's this thing we're going to go do. Um, we're going to try and make it awesome. There's some eggs that are going to get broken, but in the end, I think we're going to put on a great show. Yeah. Oh, I have I have no doubt. I I'm I'm excited to I can't wait to see the lineup myself. I mean, based on your lineups in the last couple of years, you've had some really really uh great presentations from people. You know, I've enjoyed them just being, you know, we think it's going to go to another level this year. I yeah. think that much uh we can say. You can't even tell us one. No. no. <laughs> you get in unison you said no but we'll make you a deal and we'll come back on uh probably day and date to come talk about it okay 
That'd be good. Ha happy to talk to you about it uh, whenever we publish the list and we can, you know, do like we've done the last few years and talk about, you know, what we're excited about and which will be everything. <laughs> but yeah, we're, we're excited for what, what prospects there are and we'll have more information on the 12th. So I expect that some things, some of the presentations will be similar to what you've done in the past and other ones will be more, maybe even more grandiose because you had that big stage there. I was there last year when Brad was on. I filmed some of him um, when he did his presentation and he was like this big on that stage. I mean, that from a distance, there's like, I don't know how many hundreds and hundreds of seats there, but it's a big, big room of people have not been there before. It'll be, um, you saw the AV we did last year. Yes. In that smaller room. Yes. And the level and attention to detail that went into some of that. It was exquisite. Uh, our goal would be to exceed that this year. And of course, I, I presume you're going to film it for later broad, later uh, yeah, broadcast. Yeah, all, all of the presentations are going to be available uh, like afterwards online. Um, so... That said, uh, there will be a lot more reasons to come in person. So we're going to start yeah. playing with the format. The, the, the goal is to deliver a pretty awesome live experience. There's also going to be an expo area, and uh, we're going to play with some interesting things there. So the goal is to make this as fun as humanly possible and to make sure that the presentations are as fun as humanly possible. But in the event that you can't make it, um, as a consolation gift, you will be able to see the videos. Are you going to have like a vendor area in the lobby area like you did in the past, like it was in the past? Yes, uh, that's going to be there. We're starting to line up some things around that. Uh, we're looking for good partners. And I think in a lot of cases, we're going to be cherry picking the partners that we put in there to part of this is about curating an experience for people and really choosing the companies that we think are doing awesome things. And Tony Gallardo says, will there be a Patrick and Friends session? No. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Patrick? You know, we're going to announce the lineup on February 12th. <laughs> and even, even when we announce... Patrick will be featured somewhere, but I don't think the session will be entitled Patrick and Friends. No, there, it def there <laughs> definitely won't be anything called Patrick and Friends. But if you're asking, will there be something similar to... What we had at Lossie Pug, where I hung out and talked with Jonathan Morrison, that we don't know yet. Yeah, we also don't know that. Yeah. And even even once you get your lineup on February the what date? Twelfth. February the twelfth. Yep. Ish. Even even Ish. yeah, exactly. We, even when you get that lineup on February the twelfth, things can still change. That's right. right. Yeah. Because I've seen that in the past with with major events, things you know they change sometimes, even when the lineup happens. We would expect things to, we will start with a few presentations. We probably won't list all of them. Some stuff is going to continue to be in flux. We've still got about two months and change. Uh, certainly the the partners that we have in the vendor area, things along those lines, we know it's going to be, this is coming together rather fast. So we're going to be easy on ourselves in terms of being able to say, it's all going to be this way. This is all the way that it's going to happen. Um, Given that it's the first time we're doing it, there's going to be a little bit of disorganization and a little bit of a messy process. But what we can say is that when we make some of the announcements the week of the 12th and all of that stuff, it's going to be really not radically different than the way we did it in years past, which is like we put out a bunch of headliners and then we start adding things as it goes. Exactly. And some of that some of that um, mistakes or disorganization is very organic and it actually adds to the effect i think rather than being sterile and you know by the clock i mean that i know when i record with bands sometimes the mistakes are better than what we were planning when done correctly yes so i think <laughs> <laughs> when executed it's like good improv that's my opinion it is like at its highest form you want to feel like you're a part of something that something isn't overproduced stale but is still structured and is competent and with a high level of skill. Yeah, I mean, we absolutely want things to feel human. And, you know, Richard, as a musician, I'm sure you're familiar with how it sounds when somebody goes in and retimes their drums to hit exactly on the beat and they take auto tune and make sure that the voice hits exactly on the note. We do want things to feel human, but we do also want them to be done professionally. So I, I think that those are two goals that LumaForge consistently hits. Yeah. 
and that that would be our goal for this too. Under no so, circumstances will we suck the soul out of anything. Right, exactly. <laughs> well, Patrick, when you're talking about people redoing, retiming things like drums for recording, the funny part is they retime it and then they put in a humanize. <laughs> They come back and right. D, they take that, take it out because it doesn't. Yeah, that's right. They, they, there's actually, a t that's right. There is a tool that, especially in logic, I, I did this about oh. eight years ago where you would like take and you'd move it off just like yes. a, a micro, like a. Yes. Very, just yeah. a little bit before just a late here or a millisecond there. Yeah. That's the soul removal plugin, right? That's no, it's the, the soul yeah. adding plugin. Oh, there's yeah. a soul adding, and then there's the soul remover. The which soul, is the the soul remover is the one that, that gets the drum beats exactly okay, at yeah. the zero mark on each beat. Right, yeah. Yeah. So we're going to try and do the soul addition plugin on this. Yeah. So, so Tony, are you going to be there? Yeah. <laughs> Is Tony, I guess Tony is going to be there this year. Tony Gallardo. He last year he he presented at Faster Together, but I, I think he's been doing a lot of stuff with Black Magic these days. He has been. You're dead to us, Tony. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not, 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 not true. I mean, Tony. Thankfully, we were able to put Black Magic and Tony together a few years ago, so we're we're glad he's doing. No, we think it's friends. great. I mean, like quite honestly, there is. Um, like it, this is not going to be all final cut centric. Uh, we will have like, we're going to, our goal is to really demonstrate what people are doing. And right. like, we might have our own personal allegiances, but frankly, I want to know what other people are doing. I want to see how other people are doing things. You can learn something from everybody, but I think the, the real goal is to get interesting, nuanced presentations from some of the best minds in the business. And, allow them to share some perspective that other people can take and integrate into their own work. That makes, that makes complete sense. So when I, the reason I come to NAB, you know, is pretty much as Final Cut Pro stuff because the other things I'm interested in, like the black magic stuff that they have, you know, I can watch that online. But the Final Cut Pro stuff, you get to meet the community. You get to meet people that you've talked with online, that they're in the chats, that have give, given presentations. You get to meet the Final Cut Pro community. And, I, and I've said it, you know, many times. The Final Cut Pro community is different than any other NLE community that I've seen. It really is. I, I think uh, what we can safely say is that um, – our only goal is to grow the Final Cut community at these events, and under no circumstances would we put on an event where they are not properly taken care of. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, see, I, we don't even know at this point, is there going to be a guru gathering? I don't know. Typically, that's Monday night. I got so this was a little bit of a curveball. We had never anticipated doing this. So right. I haven't even had time to think about that, but I probably should reach out to Steve and Mark and the guys and see what's going on there too. Um, my instinct is that uh, it probably should happen. And now we probably need to start talking about it. That's probably a good idea. Yeah. Right. So have you been involved with that? And besides last year, were you involved the other two years, last two years before? Yeah. I mean, we've been doing it. I think the last three or four years now. Um, and, you know, it's one of those things that we, somebody, one of like me, Mark or Steve uh, wakes up one day and is like, Hey, we got to like get that thing together this year. And that's basically what, what happens. So I'm now having that moment right now where I'm remembering that I, that nobody's done that yet. So um, we're open uh, to ideas there. <laughs> I'm curious what you guys thought was, was the best thing, but I think quite frankly, uh, yeah, that, that's probably uh, next week for me. I've got to get back on that train. So since you were involved, did you like it at the Hard Rock or did you like where at a place like it was last year yourself? Quite honestly, I don't care. You know, I for me, okay. it's just all about who shows up. I've had a great night every single time. The food's always been bad and the drinks <laughs> have always been fine. And, uh, you know, I think the food was slightly better last year and there was less of a walk to get over there. So I, I didn't mind that. Um, the room was a little bigger the year before. And so yeah. if you were claustrophobic like myself, then it was a little more breathing room. So there's pluses and minuses to each, I think. But you can expect the same bad food. Yep. And uh, decent drinks. And uh, and that's not our choice. It's a Vegas thing. Um, 
but uh, you can also expect the same great conversations with like-minded people. Exactly. So lad, two years ago, Lumberjack Systems, Phil gave out little, what were they? Little, Some little kind pouches, of, right? Little, little, little pouches, oh, yeah. Like lad a, cards. Yeah, the Lumberjack yeah. with the Lumberjack logo. Last year, they had uh, Serena Catania did a Lumberjack iMac cover of the yeah. red plaid. I don't know if yeah. you guys remember that in the workflow suite. I don't remember that offhand, but sure, I'm, I'll accept that it happened. It I, I remember very little real. from NAB years past. There's like little images and then mostly like... Yeah, yeah. I remember last year there was a party in the room yeah. from Christmas... No, Vegas vacation. I remember very little of that too. And there's... Um, there was a pool. I remember was, that. Oh, yeah, there was a pool. No, there was a that, pool yeah. and... Uh, and oh, we got to figure that out too. Um we got a lot to figure out here. We we are we are pleased to make this announcement, but the reason there's so few details is because this is as far as we've gotten to. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> still January, you know. Usually no, we haven't even started. No, no. It's less than sixty days, or it's just it's just sixty day, a little bit sixty days. I think it's like sixty six days, something like yeah. that. Yeah, it's just barely sixty days. Yeah, I. It's all on how you view it. We have at least sixty days, not barely. We have at least 60 days, and we've done it in much less than years past. Yeah. Oh, I remember. First year. We've, we've got an insane amount of time here. Oh, yeah. It's not right around the corner. All of our hotels are booked. We've got all the details figured out. Everything's it's gonna go lining smoothly. up perfectly. Nothing's going to go wrong. No. I'm going to play this back for you like a week before the event. You won't be able to find me because I'll be in nine places at once stressed out. Exactly. Yeah, that's actually one of the new <laughs> things that's getting presented at NAB is the tool that Sam uses to uh, be in nine places at once. It's a new thing. Our, our friend Scotty came up with it. Uh, it helps beam Sam from one place to another. Like, Yeah, we're working on a time travel device. I, I don't think we, there'll be a presentation at NAB about it. There you go. So yeah. Tony Gallardo says, where can people go on the web to keep up with the f for Faster Together? Of course, FasterTogether.com. Of course, FasterTogether.com. Absolutely. I knew there was a reason we got that URL. <laughs> it's coming very useful. <laughs> it absolutely is. So um, has anybody, anybody missed the big news? The big news is LumaForge is doing Faster Together Tuesday night at the Rio. Is it, what is, what is the actual room? Is it the same as last year? Priscilla something? Ballroom? I think so. Sure. It sounds that sounds right. Uh huh. It's something with the B. I remember. <laughs> um, but that's a, that's a big room. I mean, I, I it's it's really a big room. It's it's like you know, I did I did live video production for National Archives, and we had a three hundred seat theater, which is really really nice. This is like three or four times the size of that. Something like that, yeah. That sounds about right. We're not to be honest, Richard. We're uh, this is happening in real time. So <laughs> I don't know the room name because that wasn't part of those conversations. I know we booked the room. We so did we have a room, a room at the Rio. There is a room. The yeah, name of said room, details to come, week of February 12th. Hey, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> and Mike Horton's going to be a big part of it, it sounds like. Yes, he is. Michael Horton is the centerpiece. We were not going to do it without Michael Horton's involvement. Yep. Um, and that's the just the bottom line. Uh, there is not this community this tuesday night community without him so having him along for the ride and his blessing uh was uh probably more important than anything in in terms of us making the decision because we want this to be a community event like this is this is so and we want this to to bridge between the community that has been there and the community that we're adding on to with that so this is our goal is purely to take everything that's come before and hopefully improve it. Absolutely. So one thing I suggest is don't let both Bill Davises be in the room at the same time. There's one oh, from man. DC, there's one, one, one from DC like, and one from California. If, if they're both in the same room at the same time? I, I don't know because I'm a little suspicious because Bill Davis from California did not show up at the uh, Creative Summit, but Bill Davis from DC did. Yeah, it was very confusing because Bill Davis from DC is also a jellyfish customer. And that was very, very confusing for me in having those initial sales conversations with him. 
Um, but uh, anyway, I hope they're both there because we love our customers and we love Bill Davis who comes and works in faster together with us every year. And we love Bill Davis who is our customer. Yeah, we love yeah. we love all the Bill Davises. Well, there's two so far, but I haven't seen them in the same place at the same time. No, I actually want a side by side picture. We got to make. Yeah, we got to make sure that it's not the same Bill Davis just shape shifting. Well, that's yeah. what I'm wondering. If there's yeah, it very well could be. It could be just like, you know, uh, Mary Kate and Ashley Olson, uh, <laughs> who's actually just one person that moves back and forth really fast. Exactly. Exactly. All right. FasterTogether.com. Is there anything else we want to talk about while we're here? Oh, what's how is the uh, situation with the jellyfish with Apple? How is that going? And the Apple uh, business store for business or business store? It's going great, quite honestly. Um, you can check out uh, Marquez Brownlee's Twitter. So that's that's a good uh, update on yeah. how that's been going. And Justine is Eric's Twitter. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I Justine as well, and Jonathan Morrison. And uh, basically, you know, we're extremely excited about all of the stuff uh, that we're doing with Apple. It's great to officially have them as a partner. And, you know, the rollout on the store has been kind of amazing for us. So everything's going kind of awesome. So I, I saw I Justine bought one. She did an unboxing or setting up or whatever. Did she buy it from the Apple Store? The video come out. Today. The video hadn't come out yet. She put she yeah. put up a video of her uh, on Twitter of her putting one of the drives in. Yeah, yes. I think, I think she went, an Instagram. Yeah, I think I think uh, I only know of Marquez got his through the Apple Store, but I don't know about anybody else. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We know it's happening. There's stuff going on. Uh, I've been more focused on this, but we're um, it's things have been great. Like honestly, so uh, we are rolling along, and like uh, we can't wait to see you guys in Vegas. Quite honestly, it's, I, I think there's going to be. We're also I'm looking forward to the twelfth, where we can finally start talking about some of the stuff that's going to be coming up. Yeah, you have to come back on on the. We'll do another live short a short live broadcast. The so is Luma Forge themselves going to be making any announcements around NAB? I mean, any product or updates to the software? Uh, we actually don't know what we're going to do yet, quite honestly. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I think right now our big focus is making this event happen. Yeah. Um, to yeah, be continued. I mean, we're, we're always doing updates to the Jellyfish, you know, from a software standpoint or doing uh, updates to the back end and those roll out as they roll out and you can be excited for them when they happen. And we also, we don't, um, you know, like we, we just released our officially like our, our new backend in uh, November and there's going to be continuing features and things that are added on top of it. But I honestly don't look at NAB as the best place to launch anything new. Okay. So I would doubt that there's going to be like some earth shattering announcement from us on the product side, mostly because like, we live in a digital world now, and I feel like that just gets lost and gets com and and starts competing with everything. Our goal, only at these trade shows, is to see and talk to our customers and meet potential new customers, and show them what we've already kind of built, and then we iterate on top of that. You know, but I don't like. I would doubt that there's going to be a huge centerpiece, you know, earth shattering thing from us. Um, so, you know, with that said, like, I might be wrong. Who knows? You're right. So I have, I have a question for you while we while we have you two guys here because both of you are very smart. So sure. Apple Apple has pre-announced an update for Final Cut Pro, the first half of 2019 that specifically will identify and convert legacy media files. Right? Have they? They yes they have. Okay. They have. They have. Cool. So that's that's not really a, the question. The question is this. So it'll identify and convert legacy media files. Final Cut Pro will. What happens when the new OS is updated in the fall? Will the, the Final Cut Pro that comes out the first half of 2019 continue to identify and convert legacy media files? Because it's very unusual for Final Cut Pro to remove features because of an uh, OS update. I have absolutely zero idea. Uh, yes. <laughs> I think the truth is, is uh, I think it's kind of hard to say when you start getting into operating system compatibility. Right. Um, 
my instinct is they're already thinking about that. If they know that, like, they know that far better than any of us know that. And if they have a pre-announced a release, which has never happened in the history of the world. Right, um, exactly. My guess is they've thought through the OS ramifications and implications. And quite honestly, I'm not saying anything. I am not a remote authority on this outside of the fact that, like, right. knowing those guys and knowing the way that they do things, um, they're, they take operating system compatibility very, very seriously. So my instinct will be that if they took the time to pre-announce something, they will have fully thought it through. Okay. They, they absolutely did. And, and some people are surprised when I tell them that, but no, Apple did and that pre-announce that, which is unusual, you know? So I'll be curious uh -huh. is when the new OS comes out in the fall, I haven't updated to Mojave yet. Have you guys? Yeah. Yeah, we actually, on the Jellyfish, Mojave's great. Uh, and the main reason for that, it's the first operating system that Apple's put out where both NFS and SMB have Spotlight indexing working uh, for the Jellyfish. So yep. that's been the big thing for us. They finally streamlined a lot of the stuff. So we actually recommend Mojave at this point. Yep. Guys, I'm going to have to jump out. I've got a meeting here in about 10 minutes, but it's been okay. great, great hanging out and great and talking. Yes. And follow up with us uh, on social media. Keep an eye out for Faster Together. And we're looking forward to coming back here as soon as we can uh, with some more information. We know we're a little sparing on the details at the moment, but we're going to fix that. Absolutely. Sounds good, gentlemen. I will. We're going to stop the broadcast now. I'm going to delete that first one. Yeah. <laughs> I won't mind. <laughs> yeah, I've never had that happen before. I, I've been live streaming for two years. Okay. Not only with Final Cut Pro, other things as well. Never had the switching work in Google Hangout, but didn't and go that, live. Yeah, that didn't go to YouTube live. So anyway. From LumaForge to this point is that nothing surprises me any longer. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. There is no technical problem that's going to hit me that, uh, that will surprise me. So Tony Gallardo says, thanks for always thinking of the community, guys. LumaForge is a great group of peeps. Uh, thanks, Tony. Right back at you, buddy. Absolutely. All right, gentlemen. Yeah, thanks so much. Thank Take you very care, much. We're going to stop the broadcast. Thank you. All right. Talk Bye. to you later.